2018 was an amazing year for video games, but 2019 isn't looking too shabby either. In fact, 2019 is poised to be an especially stellar year for RPG fans. Here are just some of the most tantalizing RPGs set to blow you away in 2019. Anthem is one of the most anticipated games of any genre in 2019, and it's Bioware's answer to the Destiny formula of sci-fi RPG blended with FPS shooter. Simply referring to it as a Destiny competitor does a disservice to the amount of work Bioware has put into developing a game with its own identity. You guys starting without me? Freelancer! Time to get to work! Anthem is still first and foremost an RPG, and will likely boast an emphasis on narrative, character design, and storytelling. Bioware is a developer renowned the world over for creating compelling tales, characters, and worlds. And this time around, you'll get to explore those environments with your friends. Anthem's gameplay is something of a revelation, showcasing some really cool mechanics made possible by the game's jetpacks and guns aesthetic. Players will have their freelancer character don javelin exosuits that are customizable and offer different methods of gameplay, letting people tailor the way they approach Anthem to their own strengths as a player. Following Mass Effect Andromeda was always going to be hard, given that game's poor reception. The stakes are even higher for Bioware with Anthem. Luckily, all signs indicate a game that could kickstart a whole new series of beloved sci-fi epics. Speaking of games with strong pedigrees, Fire Emblem Three Houses, due out sometime in the spring of 2019, will be a top-down strategy RPG like the series' most beloved entries, which is good news for fans of both the deep combat and the romantic lives of generals in their armies. Fire Emblem Three Houses will also feature a brand new combat innovation in the form of armies on the battlefield. At its core, though, Fire Emblem Three Houses has character designs that remain aesthetically pleasing, a storyline that centers around sweeping kingdom politics, and a world that appears to be bigger and more detailed than ever before. Don't sleep on this one, it has every chance to exceed expectations, and the sky is the limit for what this series is capable of on the Nintendo Switch. Kingdom Hearts 3 really doesn't need much of an introduction, but here goes. The Square Enix and Disney collaboration is the RPG with the most hype heading into 2019, and with good reason. It has been 14 years since the critically acclaimed release of Kingdom Hearts 2 in 2005, and although there are a number of spin-offs, prequels, and remasters that have populated the franchise since, none of them come close to the impact a true sequel like Kingdom Hearts 3 will have. That said, Kingdom Hearts 3's development team has their work cut out for them. After all, they're going to need to try and clean up what has become one of the most iconically convoluted storylines in modern gaming. Catching up should be worth it, however. Kingdom Hearts 3 looks gorgeous, featuring graphics that look like they've been ripped straight out of a Pixar film. While the series has begun to distance itself from its Final Fantasy ties a little, the game will still showcase Square Enix properties rubbing up against Titanic Disney films like Frozen. Hello. Olaf, are these your friends? Hmm? Nope. Never met him. Don't know anyone blue, green, or who's oddly spiky. As for the gameplay, Kingdom Hearts 3 is as fluid as the game's combat has ever looked at first glance, and additions like Keyblade transformations should innovate spectacularly. Oh, and if that's not enough, Utada Hikaru is returning to produce a new song for the sequel, partnering with Skrillex to do it. Brace for a wild ride when Kingdom Hearts 3 releases on January 29th, 2019 in the West. The Good Life appears on this list as something of an anomaly. The game is a Kickstarter-funded project by Hidetaka Suri Hero, a rather eccentric game developer best known for the quirky cult classic Deadly Premonition, and the gruesome but emotionally weighty puzzle platformer The Missing, JJ Macfield and the Island of Memories. The Good Life almost didn't make it into development in the first place either, with a Kickstarter campaign barely making the goal at the end of its funding window after the first effort. A fig campaign hits only 45 percent of its goal. So, what's an almost failed Kickstarter game doing on a list featuring titles like Kingdom Hearts 3? It's mostly down to the fact that Swery is something of a legend in gaming circles, a kind of indie mad genius. The game will follow Naomi, a photojournalist from New York who is crippled by rising debt and escapes to a sleepy rural England town called Rainy Woods. Of course, a Swery game is never that simple. Everyone in Rainy Woods inexplicably turns into animals at night, which is, as you know, weird. There's also a murder mystery for Naomi to solve in between taking jobs that get her out of debt. 
今すぐニューヨークに帰らせろ Sure, there's every chance the good life stumbles under the weight of its ambition. Given Swery's talent and experience, though, it seems a safer bet that the good life will launch in late 2019 as one of the most charming, innovative, and fun RPGs released this year. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles already blew gaming audiences away back in 2004, when it was originally released for the Nintendo GameCube. Unfortunately, given that many Final Fantasy titles have been released on the PlayStation and PlayStation 2, Crystal Chronicles was missed by a lot of fans. That's a shame, too, because Crystal Chronicles innovated the series well ahead of its time, and it likely could have been used as a blueprint for future success had it not sold a mere 1.3 million copies during its lifetime. The thing is, Crystal Chronicles was well Loved by critics, who praised it for approaching the genre from an unusual angle but executing well on many of its innovations. The game was hyper detailed, allowing players to work with friends to play through the narrative and featured frantic, fun combat. The biggest attracting factor was the amount of hardware and scheduling required to play with friends, and the game's solo experience was much slower and grindier. With the new online multiplayer mode, You and your friends can connect and adventure together. No link cable required. Luckily, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition will support an online multiplayer mode, making the game an easily accessible must play for groups of new and returning fans. The Wasteland franchise is widely credited with providing the blueprint for Fallout's future success, so it makes sense that Wasteland 3 is set to feature a lot of the content fans of Bethesda's series are already familiar with, including post apocalyptic stories, strategic RPG combat, and squad based role playing conventions. I know all about chopping people up. Why? Am I in trouble? <gasps> Are you gonna pull me in? Wasteland 2, which was crowdfunded through Kickstarter, crushed this development goal en route to a celebrated release. Wasteland 3 will look to continue more of the same, building on the smart execution of tactical combat and the intriguing development of various squad members that made its predecessor so likable. Given the talent of the team behind it, coupled with the fact that they now know what works and what doesn't from the 2014 revival, it isn't much of a stretch to suggest that Wasteland 3 could be the best the series has ever offered once it releases in the fourth quarter of 2019. Digimon Survive is a complete curveball from developer Witchcraft and Bandai Namco. The Digimon series has always been adept at switching genres, from the pet raising sim of the early Digimon World games to the dungeon crawling and roster building of games like Digimon Story, Cyber Sleuth. But the latest for the franchise is something else altogether. Digimon Survive will be a survival simulation RPG, a departure from what we've usually come to expect from the kid friendly Digimon games. While recent offerings have flirted with some more mature storylines, they've never gone as far as what this game is proposing. In Digimon Survive, the main character finds himself stranded in the digital world. He has to find a way out, but he will also need to fight to keep himself and other characters he meets along the way alive. It's dark stuff from Digimon, but it's also exciting. This series has been executing great gameplay with regularity recently, but has always lacked a bit of an edge when it comes to separating itself from other good to great RPGs. A flirtation with the survival game genre could be just what the doctor ordered when Digimon Survive releases in 2019 to celebrate the franchise's 20th anniversary. Heads up, Game Freak is making a major game that isn't a Pokemon title. The developer announced Town, that's its working title at least, during a Nintendo Direct. The charming looking title sees its protagonist remain in the starting village for the entirety of the game, helping to protect it from hordes of monsters with the aid of the people who live there. The journey is entirely insular, and the combat looks turn based and fun, with colorful splashes indicating attacks and quirky executions. Many of the RPGs releasing in 2019 will take us on a journey. Town might be the only one capable of doing it without ever leaving its starting point, and that's very exciting. Ever wonder what would happen if you mashed up a game like Bloodborne with an anime show? You'd probably get something close to Code Vein, Bandai Namco's upcoming action role playing game that looks to take the gritty formula of some of its predecessors and put a flashier, more animated coat of paint on the surface. Code Vein was actually due out in 2018, but Bandai Namco delayed it, according to VP of Marketing Eric Hartness, to further refine its gameplay in an effort to exceed the expectations fans already have. Although Code Vein is the first of its kind, Hartness And this is likely right about the expectations. The game caught on in a big way when it was first unveiled. The game already looked buttery smooth, so further polishing might mean we'll have an RPG juggernaut on our hands in 2019. Code Vein follows characters called the Vein as they use their gifts, which are essentially like anime inspired superpowers, to fight the villainous Lost. 
the world is post-apocalyptic, the characters are all designed toward the sexier side of goth aesthetic, and the game even features a built-in buddy system with AI teammates that can help navigate its difficult combat. There's a lot to like about Code Vein, and we'll see if it can leave a bigger mark on 2019's neck later this year. Don't look so worried. We're not gonna die. I promise you that. God Eater 3 is another action RPG being developed by Bandai Namco, although its finer points are fairly different. Where Code Vein focuses on smaller enemies and more difficult gameplay, God Eater 3 is all about going massive. God Eater 3 will follow, you guessed it, the God Eaters. Beings who are able to wield special weapons called God Arcs that can destroy the Aragami the monstrous villains in the game that will make up the bulk of the combat players will experience. The game will feature a new area called the Ash Region alongside some new origami as well, inspired by Egyptian mythos, and looking mighty badass as far as boss designs go. God Eater 3 will also introduce Ray Guns, a long-range God Arc type that looks like a blast to wield and could add some needed strategic depth to the series. God Eater 3 will be as over the top as its predecessors, and that's a good thing. While some RPGs aim for realism or a sort of ground in their execution, God Eater 3 is all about delivering the flashiest, biggest fights it can. The game's trailer shows that the imagination behind its beautiful monster design and bombastic battles is still alive and well, and God Eater 3 has a strong chance to be a sleeper hit when it releases in the West in early 2019. One question first. Are you feeling anything that can be construed as explosive cell death? No? Wonderful! Let's get started. The Outer Worlds will be a new effort from veteran development studio Obsidian Entertainment. It will also be the first for the studio since being acquired by Microsoft, which should mean a greater pool of resources and funding with which to complete the game. That's good news because the Outer Worlds looks pretty ambitious. During its surprise reveal at the Game Awards 2018, early footage of the game seemed to indicate that Obsidian Entertainment was angling for a mix between the traditional, choice-heavy RPGs the studio has become famous for, and a Borderlands-style humor to back it up. It sounds like a winning combination, and it looked like it too. The trailer noticeably poked fun at the classic choose-between-two-lives trope that comes with the game's territory. Oh. You know you didn't have to shoot either one, right? But it's fine, I guess. You just keep being you. The Outer Worlds also features a bit more of a frenetic pace than previous Obsidian Entertainment titles. There's a lot of encouraging innovation bubbling under the surface of the Outer Worlds, which seems set to challenge our notions of what it means to be a deep, narrative-rich RPG when it launches in 2019. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more SVG videos about your favorite games are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.